Lesson 8. Adding and Multiplying Polynomials To find the sum of two polynomials, we can simply collect the monomials that have the same variable multiples and add their coefficients via the distributive property. A coefficient is the constant multiplier of a monomial term. For example, the monomial negative 3xy has a coefficient of negative 3. Given two polynomials like 3x plus 5 and 2x plus 4, we can add them together by combining the terms that have the same variable multiples. Often these are referred to as like terms. We can do this because of the distributive property. In this example, we have the x terms and the constant terms, so the sum is 5x plus 9. To demonstrate a slightly more complex example, we take 3xy minus 7x plus 1 and add it to 4y minus 3. Adding these together and combining like terms, we get 3xy minus 7x plus 4y minus 2. This example illustrates that polynomials do not need to have matching like terms. In this example, the only terms that we can combine are the constant terms. Notice that in our first sum, we added two first-degree polynomials and the result was a first-degree polynomial. In the second sum, we added a second and a first-degree polynomial and the result was a second-degree polynomial. In both cases, the sum was a polynomial with the degree equal to the greater of the two polynomials that were added. It would be tempting to say that this is a rule, however, this isn't quite right. The degree of a sum of polynomials is actually less than or equal to the maximum degree of the two polynomials that were added. A simple example will show how the degree of a polynomial sum can be less than the polynomials that were added. Take 5y minus 8 and negative 5y plus 3. Then the sum is negative 5, which has degree 0, while the polynomials that we added have degree 1. For multiplication, we recall that a polynomial is the sum of monomials and use the distributive property to multiply the monomial terms. Then we collect the like terms and combine them. To multiply two polynomials, we can distribute each of the terms of the first polynomial over the terms of the second. For example, if we have 3x minus 5 and 2y plus 8, then we begin by multiplying 3x by 2y and 8 to get 6xy and 24x. Then we multiply negative 5 by 2y and 8 to get negative 10y and negative 40. Notice that we multiplied two polynomials of degree 1 and the result was a polynomial of degree 2. As this last example indicates, the degree of a product of polynomials is equal to the sum of the degrees of the polynomials that we are multiplying. To further illustrate polynomial multiplication, we will give another example. Take the polynomials x minus y plus 2 and xy minus 3. Again, we distribute the terms of the first polynomial over the second. For the first term, we get x squared y minus 3x. For the second, we get negative xy squared plus 3y. For the third, we get 2xy minus 6. Typically, we will write the highest degree terms first. In this case, we rearrange the terms via commutativity to get x squared y minus xy squared plus 2xy minus 3x plus 3y minus 6. Given a monomial term like 4xy, the additive inverse is negative 4xy. For a general polynomial like 3x squared minus y plus x plus 2, we get the additive inverse by multiplying by negative 1 or negating each monomial. So in this case, the additive inverse is negative 3x squared plus y minus x minus 2. The case of multiplicative inverses for polynomials is much more difficult and we will wait to get into that. In general, the multiplicative inverse of a polynomial is not a polynomial. In this way, polynomials are like integers and in that we need to expand the set to have multiplicative inverses.